Has Dr. Sean Baker's diet finally started to fail him? Let's find out. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. Right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As always, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO organic acid stool test and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. All right, good morning. As many of you guys know, I've been doing a, you know, a carnivore diet for the last now going on, well, soon to be eight years. And I've been, uh, you know, what I, what I feel has been in great health, no issues, no health issues, no challenges. And that diet has been uh, basically, you know, just lots of meat. You know, sometimes I'll add some dairy, sometimes some eggs, things like that. Uh, but recently I have uh, encountered something that's gonna cause me to change that for a period of time. And so this is the first time that I'm watching this video and I obviously don't know the reason why he is changing his diet. But I do find it strange that the diet he claims to be the most optimal for human health, the best for digestion and the most anti-inflammatory diet on the planet is not sufficient for his particular needs. So let's see why. And um, I'm not going vegan. I'm not going to be adding a bunch of fruit and honey or anything like that. You guys can relax about that. But it's only a matter of time before you go Saladino on us, Sean. What, you know, as some of you guys may know, so seven weeks and two days ago now, I injured my neck while doing jujitsu. And uh, I ended up with uh, what is likely a large herniated disc between the C6 and C level, C7 level in my spine, which causes something called C7 radiculopathy, which just basically means the nerve root is being compressed and it's causing quite a few symptoms. Uh, for me, that means, uh, you know, my index and my, my middle finger are completely numb. They've been pretty much numb the entire time for seven weeks now. Um, I've got, uh, you know, pain that, that varies, sometimes as low as a three, sometimes as high as an eight. All jokes aside, I genuinely hope he makes a speedy recovery. Fortunately, I've never suffered with any back issues, but I know a few people who have, and I know how debilitating it can be. But I come back to my point earlier, it just shows he hasn't got faith in his diets if he's having to change it. Uh, but, but it sort of never goes away, and it's, you know, it's kind of like a stabbing pain in the shoulder blade, down to you know, throbbing, aching down the, down the arm, to, to kind of burning pain into the hand and fingers and so that's been going on and there's things I can do to sort of improve it you know like for instance uh, nerve flossing or nerve gliding where you basically you know work on like stretching out things like the median nerve and when I do that you know repeatedly that sometimes makes the symptoms go away and and that's great problem is I can't do it when I'm asleep and so I usually have a hard time sleeping and you guys know, wake up you know with, with pretty significant pain. Again, touch wood, I've never suffered with any significant injuries and I don't wish this on anyone, so I hope he gets to the bottom of this as soon as possible. Anyway, um, you know, I've, I've got cervical traction and all these different, different things. And so what, you know, what I've got is neuroinflammation. This is basically what's going on, inflammation of the nerve root, you know, and it, and it quite honestly is, is kind of painful. Now I've still been able to train and, and work out and, do all those things, albeit while in pain, but I continue to do it anyway because getting weaker is not gonna solve the problem. No. Seems perfectly sensible, doesn't it? He has a herniated disc that causes pain and inflammation, and his answer is to put more pressure on his body. Not even a remote possibility that it could worsen his pain, cause increased nerve damage, or cause a risk of further disc injury. And for those of you who don't understand, that is called a British sarcasm. I'm careful around my neck so I don't aggravate it while I'm doing that. But nonetheless, it is a, you know, quality of life is somewhat reduced right now, as you guys might imagine. Um, so here's the change I'm going to be making. So we know, uh, you know, typically, well, typically I've been doing this diet. I don't care about ketones. I've never worried about that. It's not, and, and really, I don't think I need to. But there is some pretty good data out there on ketogenic diets or ketosis and neuroinflammatory conditions. Pretty good data, you say? It's funny what people call pretty good data these days. A herniated disc is like a cushion between Sean's bones in his neck and spine, getting squeezed out and pressing on a nerve. It's a physical problem, much like a bulging balloon, squeezed between your hands. Taking down some of the inflammation, even if it was hypothetically possible with his diet, is not going to fix the herniated disc. It's not gonna magically push the squeezed out cushion back into place or reduce the pressure it's putting on his nerve. 
So again, it seems bizarre to change his diet to fix a mechanical issue in his body. The inflammation is just a byproduct of the damage. So reducing the inflammation still leaves a herniated disc that is putting pressure on his nerve. All of which, under the backdrop of the carnivore diet, he has claimed for the last eight years is the best thing since sliced bread and is so good at reducing inflammation. The whole thing is bizarre and doesn't quite add up. You know, as this paper here talks about, and there's many, there's many, 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 many studies out there that show that uh, ketones can potentially help neuroinflammation. And so in an effort to avoid hopefully needing surgery for this, because a surgery for this, depending on the exact size and location of the disc rupture, uh, may, may, re may revol result in either a disc replacement or fusion at the neck, or perhaps a decompression from the, from the back. Either way, options I'm not excited about. Certainly you'd rather uh, get through this without surgery, so then I can get back to life and get back to training hard and, and playing hard like, like, like we're supposed to, right? Now I agree it's a gnarly surgery with a fairly long recovery, so I'm not surprised he wants to avoid that. But I don't understand for one minute how he believes his diet is going to put his herniated disc back into place. And I certainly don't understand his logic to keep training with an injury that he's already said is causing him a lot of pain. If a patient came to Sean and they said they had this type of pain and problem, he would sure as hell tell them to dial down the training to help the body recover. So as a consequence, my dietary shift is going to be away from consuming um, as much protein and probably more more fat based. In fact, yesterday was my first day. It was basically a fasting day, more or less, with a little bit of fat added in there. And I noticed, you know, maybe a 25% reduction in symptoms, which is a good sign. Now I still didn't sleep well, or I actually slept slept pretty well. Uh, my blood glucose, this is over, this is an overnight tracing, so it's very very low, uh, as as would be expected. So things I expect to see, I expect to see very low blood glucose, which is which makes sense. I expect to you know, lose some weight and lean out because I'm gonna be consuming overall less calories even though it's gonna be a higher fat percentage. And then what I hope to see is a reduction in these, you know, this neuroinflammation and the pain. And so I can, so I can hopefully avoid surgery and uh, you know, do whatever. It is. Now if it goes to surgery, so be it. I'll still be out there training and you know, do not just recover from that, so. Despite being in pain and keen to avoid surgery, I don't for one minute understand this incessant need to train. I understand the desire to be fit and healthy, but it always comes across that he has some real hang-ups about training and pushing his body. I genuinely don't know whether I admire his dedication or whether I think he's batshit crazy. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm making the change. Uh, you know, you guys uh, just, you know, do a little, uh, you, know, th you know, whatever. Uh, that sort of stuff, hopefully it helps. Uh, you know, like I said, I'll continue making videos and all the stuff I've been doing all the time. Just continuing to support, you know, obviously a carnivore diet. Um, I'll still be eating plenty of meat. And uh, like I said, just gonna change the protein fat ratios for a while and see if we can get some, some, some better relief with this. All right, guys, that's where I'm starting today and I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right, we'll talk to you soon, bye-bye. I mean, what can you even say to any of that? I do genuinely hope though, that he avoids surgery and gets sorted. But we are talking about a structural problem that diet is very unlikely to fix. Even if it does reduce some of the inflammation, the herniated disc will still be there. And if he continues to train, then it will be very likely that he will end up needing the surgery anyway, and he could potentially make things much worse. My overriding takeaway from all of this though, is that for someone who has pushed the carnivore diet hard for eight years, he appears to have little confidence in it and immediately jumps ship to the keto diet. After all, as he has said repeatedly, the carnivore diet is the best diet for reducing inflammation. Anyhow, that's the end of today's video. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this one up here because I'm sure you'll find it equally interesting. And the only other thing that's left for me to say is to remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.